if life could be compared to a game, this is halftime. Halftime conversations, I like to call this one. I recorded a video a while ago with five mindsets to help people younger than 30 make better decisions in life. Now, you're older than 30 now. You're, you're with me, I'm 40. This is halftime, man. We've reached the middle of our life. If we're gonna live 70 or 80, this is the middle. This is the halftime conversation. This is when we get into the locker room and we make the adjustments. The coach comes along and says, look, we've tried this, this didn't work. Let's adjust so we can win the game at the end of the day. So halftime conversations, how to make better decisions after you're 30. This is gonna be great. I cannot wait to tell you the fifth one, but you're gonna have to watch the four first oh, ones. Let's go. Day. Making decisions after you're 30 is different than making decisions before you're 30. Before you're 30, you don't know anything. It's very likely that you're dumb. Your decisions won't affect anybody else other than you. It's a very selfish game, but still an important game. After 30, you have to think about the people around you, your family, the consequences, the heavy consequences. The long term is not that far anymore. You know, before you're 30, you have the short term and the long term. Right now, you've got all terms all on you because you know you're you're playing in both fields so you have to be really careful on how to make decisions so my mindset number one is this learning from your past you have to learn from your past i've i've said this before and i'll say it again the whole idea about learning from other people's mistakes that's rubbish because we don't learn anything from other people's mistakes. We might get a direction, but if we don't make our own mistakes, we will never learn. And this is what the past is for. The first 20 or 30 years of your life, they are there for you to make mistakes. You fail fast forward. You just keep going and you learn the lessons. You evaluate the experience because experience without evaluation means nothing. So that's the point of aging. That's the point of growing. Embrace that. Embrace aging and learn from your mistakes. Let me share an experience with you that I had when I was quite young. I was recently married and I carried on a, a, a debt from a credit card thing that we bought when I was, I think, 18 or 19. And then we got married and then I forgot to pay that. And then I forgot the first month and then the second month I didn't have the budget to pay. And thinking back, I'm like, man, this is like 400 bucks. This is nothing. But you know, when you're young, $400 could mean the world. And I didn't pay the first month, the second month. Long story short, that went into the forgotten drawing, uh, the forgotten draw. You know what happened? I think six or seven months later, that bill was $3,000. And I had a big bill in front of me. Why? because I didn't learn from my mistakes. What did I learn from that mistake? Number one, if you don't have self-control, never get a credit card. Easy, that's a lesson for you if you're, if you're older than 30 and you still carry on credit card debts, just crack them, cut them off, and just live on your money. But if you are wise, if you are wise, and you know how to use your credit card, and you know how to pay the credit card at the end of every month, and you have the bill, and you live within your means, and you make five grand and you spend three grand, you can get a lot of rewards and you can use the credit card to your advantage. That's how rich people think. Rich people never put their money to risk. They put the bank's money to risk because the bank doesn't have any money. That's the truth. The bank doesn't have any money. What the bank does is negotiate my money with your money. So the bank get my money and pays me a misery and lends that money to somebody else and, and charges them a fortune. That's how the banks make money with no money you have to learn that side so first mindset learn from your past learn to look back hindsight if you can there's a video right here on the cards that talks about foresight insight hindsight and blindsight four different stages of our uh, wisdom gathering I've, I've recorded this video a while ago i was sitting right here it was a beautiful video beautiful piece of art and I'm pretty sure you're gonna get a lot out of it so just click on the card right here and you can watch it moving along mindset number two balance your priorities balance your priorities that's the idea of focus you know I I read a book a long time ago that taught me this what's focus focus is the ability to say no to good opportunities in order to say yes to the best opportunities you don't have to say yes to everyone Oh, this is good. This is a lesson that I feel like people need to learn. Like it should be, it could be for the youngers. It, it could be for the youngsters, but 
for us, when you step into parenthood and you have to uh, foment some relationships that you're not really fond of, and we feel the pressure of saying yes to everyone. Oh, can you come and help me with this? Yeah, sure. Can you come and be part of this thing in the school? Yeah, sure. Can you come and coach your kids? Yeah, sure. And it, you say yes to everything. You fill up your life with yeses to everyone. You become the yes man. Newsflash for you. You do not have to say yes to everyone. If you say yes to everyone, you won't be able to say yes to the most important people. You have to learn how to prioritize. And this is not being arrogant. It's not being prideful. It's being zealous with the gift that you have called life. You have to share your life with the people that matter. The most to you, your family, they need time. Obviously everyone, but I'm not saying people are uh, different. Everyone's the same. Everyone deserves to be treated well, but you have to be very zealous and very aware of your time. Um, I learned this sentence and this, is, this has been helping me quite a lot. Uh, the guy who shared the sentence with me actually sits behind the camera in every video that we do. Jordan, he's, he's a genius. He's young, but he's a genius. One day, one day I'm gonna have one with him right here. But <laughs> He said to me this uh, a long time ago, when we started this whole journey of videos, he said, the frequency of your no will determine the value of your yes. That is gold right there, my friends. The, secret, the frequency of your no will determine the value of your yes. Practical example. If you ask me 20 things in a row, can you do this? No. Can you do this? No. Can you do this? No, 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 no. 20 times when I say yes, you're really going to value my yes. So if we say we're going to have coffee at 9 o'clock, you're going to be there at 9 o'clock. You won't miss out on it. If you say we're going to have lunch at 12, you're going to be there at 12. And you're going to come prepared. You're going to have the questions. You're going to value the time. Why? Because it's valuable because it's not that available. The less available, the more valuable. Ooh, that's another golden rule. Oh, look at that. The less available, the more valuable. Oh, this, this is a good thing. Since we're rolling, since we recorded this, let me, let me say this. Um, life is full of surprises. And life is all about, like, we're talking about better choices. And I, I had this thing, like, everything is your fault. The things that you, you're in control, they're your fault. And the things that you're not in control, they're your fault too. Because how you react to them is your fault. You're in control. I just got a call, I don't know if you guys got that, but I just got a call saying that I'm going to be charged 50% more taxes than what I already pay. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't think I've done anything wrong, but my tax rate is just going up, which means that I'm going to get paid less. I have two options. I can, I can let that weigh me down, or I can go, you know what? I'm paying more tax, it means I got to make more money. That's it. Just to compensate for that one, just moving along, keep doing what I'm doing, and it'll come. You know, so. It, if you let your day be ruled by the negative things that come your way, you're, you're always going to be dragging yourself. You're going to be stuck. So don't let the circumstances dictate your mood. But we were saying the less available, the more valuable. The more available, the less valuable. That's, that's the law of demand. It's the same for products and services in the market. So that's mindset number two, which leads me to the next section. I really want to skip to the fifth one. Like I, I, I want to skip to the end. but. Let, let's do this quickly. Mindset number three. Mindset number three for making better choices after you're 30. Have time conversations. Here we go. Understanding life's seasons. Life is full of seasons. Life is not a linear line. Linear line, that's a bad thing. <laughs> life is not linear. It's not straight. Life is full of ups and downs. And you're supposed to enjoy on the mountaintop and on the valley. You know, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not fear. He's Even though I walk through the valley, God is with me. So there is no promise that He's going to take you out of the valley, but He will be with you in the valley. That's Psalm 23. Probably the most well-known verse of the Bible in the whole world. Understand your life seasons. I, um, I remember a long time ago, I preached a message on, on the seasons of the year and the seasons of life. And I said, oh, we... We probably have, generally speaking, four seasons of our, a lot of our life and it just keeps going in cycles. You have winter where everything's cold and it feels like there's no return or anything. You have autumn or um, what is the other name? Fall, where all the leaves are falling and it, it looks dead and it feels dead and you feel like everything is just running away from you. And then you have uh, spring where things are flourishing and then you get excited and you know that could be the birth of a new kid or a new job. And then you got summer where it's just enjoying and you're living the dream and it's always marging and then all of a sudden after summer boom bad seasons again that is 
life. Life is full of seasons. You're supposed to enjoy the seasons, not endure the seasons. So we had a video about this, endurance and enjoyment. And it's right here on the cards. You can watch that one too. I keep referring back to my own videos and I think, I think, it's only, only a, a hint. I think we're getting good at this. <laughs> Which takes me to this, um, just, just a little pause. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, I would highly encourage you to subscribe to our channel. Just, it doesn't take you much. Just click on the button down below because the vast majority of people who watch our videos, they're not subscribed. And when you do, you get first access notifications on the things that we do. And we're doing some really, really good things here. So I would encourage you to subscribe to our channel. All right, let's go back. Still in enjoying our seasons. I remember uh, a while ago, one of the ladies in our church, her name is Claire Pike here. Um, she, she shares the story that one day she was walking on the mall and then she saw this mother with the kid just throwing the tantrum. You know, we've all been there. And the mother was desperate and so embarrassed and looking around and you could see that she was about to cry. So Claire walks up to her, puts her hand on her shoulder and surprisingly, the, the lady thought she was gonna be called attention or something. Surprisingly, Claire says, Look, I just want to tell you, you're doing a great job as a mom. And she burst into tears and it's a beautiful story when she shares. But the idea is the seasons of life, they might seem disjointed and, and it, it, it happens. And we feel like we're just battling every day. This too shall pass. And trust me, you will miss the kids are sleeping in your bed. You will miss the drives to the school. You will miss the games. You will miss the misbehaviors of your kids when they're young, you miss all of that. So enjoy while you can. And while we're talking about seasons, remember to always nurture good relationships. We are not an island. Man is not an island. We, we need each other. We're social beings. We are tribal people. We need our friends. Uh, there's a book here in Australia, um, or the author is Australia, but it's worldwide. It's called The Five Regrets of the Dying. And one of the regrets, one of the top five regrets of the dying is not having enough time with friends. We look back and then we're like, man, this guy is such a good friend and we haven't spent time together. When you grow old, these are the people you're going to grow old with. So you, you really want to nurture good relationships. They say you're an average of the five people you spend the most time with. So if that's true, who are the people in your inner circle? in your Dunbar's number, you know, the five, the 15s, the 50s, who are the people closest to you? Who are you learning from and who are you inspiring? So just keep that in mind. And while we're talking about relationships, I wanna encourage you to share, cherish the moments. I encourage you to cherish the moments. I'll, um, I'll give you an example. Recently, we had this uh, Mother's Day church, um, <laughs> Recently, we had this celebration of Mother's Day in our church. You know, it's once a year and we, we honor all the women there and we're talking about the moms and just taking the time of the year to compliment our mothers because we don't do that often, which is a shame on us. And we had the kids uh, doing a little video as we do in church to, um, to their mothers and talk to the mothers. And my daughter actually was in one of these videos and she said, one of my favorite memories with my mother is when we went to the beach me and my sister, and we sat down on the sand. And instead of building sand castles, we built a whole sand city. And my wife was in tears. And the reason why she was in tears, not just because of the silly thing, but because she said, I'm amazed that she remembers a time that we just did nothing. There was no gift involved, nothing. We were just enjoying. I said this here before, your kids don't want more from you. They want more of you. That's what they need. So cherish the moments, nurture good relationships, and enjoy the seasons. That's the mindset number three, which takes me to this. Um, and before we move on to mindset number four, um, I don't know if you know that, but I wrote a book. It's called The Icky Guide, The First Step to a Life with No Regrets. I want to help you find purpose in life because I believe if you find your purpose in life, none of these things are going to be really stressful to you because you're going to wake up every day with a sense of fulfillment. And you can get access to the book on my website, which is on, on a description, on the link in the description below. You just go on the website, pedroonpurpose.live, pedroonpurpose.live, and you have access to the book there and the course that we did and our community on Patreon. You can do a bunch of stuff there. There's a lot of good resources out there. And I feel like this is a good point for you to stop and say, you know what? I want to check that out. 
It's one of the main things that I come across when I'm having conversations with people. A lack of purpose in life. All right, let's go back. Mindset number four, navigating change. Notice that I didn't say accepting change. Change is hard, but it's inevitable. You know, uh, two things are certain in life, death and change. So just accept it and move on. I didn't say accept change. I said navigating change. You have to be good at adapting. Navigating change is a skill. I, I, I love the idea of just navigating as we age. Embrace your aging. That's a good thing. But as a skillful, um, what do you call the guy who drives the ship? Captain, sailor. Sailor, yeah, <laughs> Popeye, sailor. <laughs> As a skillful sailor navigates to, through the changes of waves and tides in the ocean, so should we. You know, it's a, life is a big ship and you're in charge. So when you're in charge, you can navigate left and right depending on the waves that you're facing. And you can choose to anchor down and just wait until the things calm down. Or you can choose to go against the waves. It's your choice. Learn how to navigate change. I was talking to this guy recently about investing and I have a few real estate properties back in Brazil and, and a few other things that I've invested on. And I told him, like, if you invest a hundred dollars every month, by the time you, by the time you're 45 or 50, you'll be a millionaire. It's the magic of compound interest. He was shocked. He was like, nobody ever told me that. And I said, bro, this is mathematics, just compound interest. And, and he said, oh, I'm going to start saving a hundred dollars every month. Why is that? Because 30 years are going to go by anyway. So it's your choice. How are you going to be in 30 years based on what you choose right now? And mindset number five, which I'm really excited about it. I, wanna, I really want to narrow it down to this one. This is, this is what I live for, right? I've, I started this video with this in mind. You have to think about legacy. It's funny, as, as I'm recording this video, we were just outside on a break. We were talking about legacy. There's a big difference between legacy and inheritance. Inheritance is what you leave for people. A legacy is what you leave in people. Whatever it is that you buy, all of the acquisitions you have, all of the properties, all of the superficial stuff, they're not gonna make any difference. They're not gonna be remembered. They're gonna be forgotten as soon as you die. But what you leave in people, that's how you transcend, that's legacy. I wanna leave a legacy behind, not an inheritance behind. And here's the question that I want to ask you. What type of legacy do you want to leave? What type of legacy do you want to leave? When people are standing at your funeral, paying their respects to you and the family, and they come to the eulogy, and they want to talk about you, what do you want to be the resounding idea on your funeral? Not that it matters, because you're going to be dead anyway, but <laughs> what do you want people to remember you for? I know what I want people to remember me for. When I die, I want my family to celebrate. I've made it, I've made it home. I'll be waiting for them. My kids are gonna be sad, yes, because they're gonna miss daddy, but hopefully I will have prepared them enough to know that this is just a season. This is just a while, just a little while to stay here, like the hymn says, and they'll come and meet daddy really soon. And we're gonna live for eternity together. But on my tombstone, I want it written, he showed me Jesus. I don't need nothing else. No accolades, nothing. If people can remind themselves and remember my life for what it is, an instrument in God's hands to show people who Jesus is. That's it. Like what we're trying to do here, to introduce Jesus to every single conversation we have. And this is why I think it's important for you to find your purpose. I've said it uh, many, many times, and it's written in my book. I think every human being has two purposes in life. Every human being has at least two purposes in life. One of them is selfish, one of them is altruist. The selfish one is a gift that God gave you for you to live your life and enjoy. You know, when you have joy in your life, you're your soccer player, you enjoy playing soccer, or you're an engineer, you enjoy creating things or creating processes. You're a doctor, you enjoy saving lives. You go to work every day and you actually enjoy it. You're happy to go to work. That's a gift. Not many people are like that. More than 70% of the people in the world live a life with no purpose. So that's a gift. But the second purpose we all have in life, it's not a selfish one, it's an altruistic one. And it's a gift that you, you receive from God, but then you give back to God. Like I always say, your life is a gift from God to you. How you live your life is your gift from you to God. 
And that's when you discover your purpose. And that's when things that are material don't really matter. And that's when we can reflect back on songs like Alicia Keys, for example. Some people want it all, but I, I want nothing at all if I don't have Jesus. That's the purpose. For me, that's the purpose. So what is the purpose of your life? How do you find it? Well, a good first step is to get my book, Self-Promotion Unashamed. <laughs> you can get my book and go on the website. There's a bunch of information on the link in the description down below. And hey, I really appreciate it. Like, I've, we're gonna stop right here. I know there is more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give two more mindsets on our Patreon community. If you wanna go check it out, you just go on patreon.com slash purpose. Other than that, I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you comment down below what you learned. And I'll see you next Friday with the next video. So it's a good day.